What are five things I wish I knew before I got Cooney Coonies? Today I'm going to tell you. G'day there, I'm Dana from Piwaka Cavalli Homestead and today I'm going to be outlining five things that I'd wish I had known about Cooney Coonies before we made the leap and actually got them. If you want to know more about Cooney Coonies, I have actually put together a book all about raising Cooney Coonies which I will put here for you. There's a link to that down in the description. You can check that out. Now, Cooney Coonies are something that I never thought I would be raising. Um, I never thought I would really be a pig person. Um, but we decided that we're trying to look at some different ways of getting some different kinds of meat on the homestead and pigs kind of came up. And we'd raised a Cooney Cooney when we were younger um, at home and with my parents and she was lovely. Um, we inadvertently fed her too much and she ended up blind with her over eyelids that had overgrown her eyes. So unfortunately Betsy became bacon and it was really good bacon. Um, but it was not something that I'd really consider raising for ourselves until I'd done a bit of thinking about it and we thought we would give it a go. Now the very first day that we bought, bought home our Cooney Coonies, we bought home uh, two girls and a boy, they were all from the same litter. And we had set up this pen up in the paddock and we had put a hot wire around and then we'd surrounded that in some chicken wire and thought, you know, between, surely between the chicken wire and the electric fence that would keep them in. And one thing we were not prepared for was their complete and utter disregard for fencing. And so we popped this Cooney Cooney in the pen, he panicked and he just ran straight through the electric fence, straight through the chicken wire, straight through our front fence, which also had a hot wire and the front fence, and took off and ended up through the neighbor's fence, running through the paddock, scaring their horses. So we're like, oh no, we've lost our Cooney Cooney, our very first one. So the girls we caught um, when we took them out of the car, that's lesson number one, don't transport them loose in your car. Oh my goodness, the stink. They were so stinky. They pooped everywhere. They'd vomited. We had put a tarpaulin down, but they'd managed to scrunch it up. So the back of the car stunk for days of gross cooney cooney. So if you are picking them up, put them in a box or put them in the trailer. Don't put them in the car for a two hour car journey. Oh. Anyway, back to the fencing. So we thought we'd we got these other two coonies out of the car because they were gross and we put them straight into the actual house and because we put them in there together and they went into the house they burrowed into the straw but the boy coonie coonie had gone and we spent ages looking for him and later on eventually the neighbor came and knocked on our door and he was cuddling this little coonie under his wing that he had rugby tackled across the paddock and grabbed him like full, just landed in the mud. He was covered in mud and the Cooney Cooney was <laughs> covered in mud. Um, and so he brought him over and we put them in. Since then we have found the electric fencing worked-ish. We just had the thin wire, not the big tape. And we found that they learnt really quickly just to run at it to get through it. So what we've actually done for our Cooney Coonies now is we have woven wire, we call it sheep netting here, it's like woven wire with sort of decent sized gaps in it. Um, and we have put chicken wire around that up to about knee height and then the rest of the chicken wire we have laid flat on the ground and pegged it all in. And any areas that we think that they might challenge we also have a hot wire and that combination is absolutely fantastic. Um, they can lift gates off hinges. Um, they will dig under or push over most fencing options. So uh, yeah, if you're planning on getting Cooney Coonies, make sure your fences are up to scratch. The second thing I really wasn't ready for was the cuteness factor and just how much I would actually enjoy having these pigs. The baby ones are super cute, but they're also really friendly. Despite not being hand raised, they came up, they like scratches, of course they come running for food. And they are just really cute and sweet little things and I wasn't really prepared to fall in love with a pig. The third thing that I was not prepared for and I really wish that we'd known about, Cooney Coonies are advertised as not rooting the ground up. As it turns out, probably about half of them do and it does depend what shape their noses are. Um, unfortunately for us, our ones have sort of the longer snout um, and they enjoy rooting the ground, especially if the ground is soft. So we had thought that Cooney Coonies would be perfect because they don't root the ground. And so we ended up putting a couple of clips in their noses, which is also meant to stop them rooting. Um, and some of them it kind of did, but when the ground's soft, despite having the clips in, they'd still root it up. So that was something we weren't prepared for. Um, if the Coonies have enough minerals and enough food, they're a lot less likely to dig it up. But if the ground's really soft, they're going to give it a go. 
The fourth thing I wish I had known before we got them was the amount of noise that they made. Pigs are super loud and if they are calling for food in the morning we have our pigs in two separate areas, the ones at the top. We're feeding them feeder grain so we're growing them um, a bit bigger and a bit faster. So they start first thing, as soon as they hear someone outside they start and because they're making the noise the ones down the bottom start as well and they make a hoor of a noise um, and it's not the most pleasant noise and if you need to catch them for any reason you must, must, must be wearing at least one layer of ear protection. Ideally you'd have um, ear buds as well as ear muffs on because they are so loud. And the fifth and final thing that I wasn't ready for was the fact that they will eat anything that is sick or injured or baby um, that is in the paddock with them. They're such friendly gentle animals that I really didn't anticipate that they would eat a sickly duck. We had a duck We, I can't remember what the kids called him. It was something to do with, oh Derpy. They called him Derpy. He was quite a bit smaller than the other ducks. And I don't actually have proof that he didn't die first but the pigs definitely ate him. Um, and a friend of ours, he put the Cooney Coonies in with the goats as they were having their baby goats. Same problem, they're not 100% sure that the baby goat was born alive, but the pigs definitely ate it. So be really aware, they are very friendly pigs, but they are, at the end of the day, scavengers and they will eat anything. They're very opportunistic. With any animal, never leave a kid in there unattended, either a human or a goat kid. Um, and never turn your back on them. They are big animals and they can be pushy, especially if they think that you have food. They're very, very friendly and very gentle to handle, but at the end of the day, they are animals and if there's food there for them, they will eat it. So I hope you found this video helpful. I know it's just a quick, short one. Um, check out my book down below and I also have a playlist, which I'll put up here somewhere, um, some different things about raising Cooney Cooney pigs. And I will see you in the next one.